politics began, there's been some strange sightings all across America from eyewitnesses that we're looking at on the ground here that now we can see some strange connections that needs to be revealed between all of these different areas from Idaho, to Savannah to Colorado, multiple locations across the United States seeing things. And I'm going to get you this information. But first, let's go to when USGS came out with the report and then follow you down the line of what's happening. July 8th, 2025, an earthquake swarm began at Mount Rainier, about 60 miles southeast of Seattle. The swarm has surpassed the previous largest recorded swarm, which occurred in 2009. The activity or the event rate has peaked at, on July 8th at over 30 events per hour and has since declined to just a few events per hour. The earthquakes are 1.5 to about 4 miles beneath the summit and are likely caused by fluids moving around through those cracks and faults underneath Mount Rainier. And it's important to note that this is still within background activity for Mount Rainier. Importantly, there have been no signs of ground deformation, satellite detected SO2 gas, volcanic thermal signatures, or other unusual activity. I'm Scott Beeson, the park geologist at Mount Rainier National Park. It's another beautiful day here at Mount Rainier. We've been working closely with our partners of the United States Geological Survey to monitor the ongoing earthquake swarm and keep visitors informed. The earthquakes we are seeing are small and deep beneath the volcano, too small to be felt by people in the park. At this time, there are no National Park Service safety alerts related to this swarm. We will continue to work with the United States Geological Survey to actively monitor Mount Rainier. So they're on an active watch right now. You think they're going to tell us whenever things really start to go down? Drop what you believe in the comments. Now, remember, this place that Mount Rainier is on is on a Yellowstone hotspot. And let's go into what Idaho situation where the ground area next to Snakes River, which is another fault area. The guy actually goes to the area and then steps into there and then watch what happens to this man. It's fine. It's fine. So. Oh. So let's get some rocks. Nikes. <laughs> All right, well, that was an unstable area. Let's not get it from the hillside. Let's just get it from here and then uh, let's get on out of here. This is worth, yeah, that was, that was knee deep in there. Look at that. This is exactly why I said if you go by areas like this, be careful. How many of y'all would just walk over off into that thing and dang there fall into it? It's just like, again, he's getting rocks and stuff. He's trying to do like amateur geology. Now, the area he's at, a local told me, yes, that is the Snake River. He is not by the volcanic area, but where the lava flows, but he's right next to it where there's another extensive opening is happening. And this is in Idaho. Now, this is the other situation that is happening. We monitored water since you hear people say, hey, we've seen some strange things happening with water. And so with this eyewitness account, we're going to go into this. They go by the area of the Rocky Mountains. And usually Jane Brown goes with her husky. She has a husky right here. You can see it in the Rocky Mountains area. 714 was the exact date Mount Renner had is swarm. And interestingly enough, she saw something on the exact same day, but she went to a river that was close by Rocky Mountains because Rocky Mountains in Colorado has geothermal vents. But the area she went next to is not the same. All right, y'all, we really got to figure out what this is. Here's what's interesting about this. When I looked up this area where this river is at, it says geoactivity in Colorado is primarily associated with hot springs and wells found in the western part of the state, particularly within Rio Grande Rift and San Juan La Plata Mountains. So this area doesn't even have a geothermal vent. 
something is happening here and we need to figure this out what do y'all think is happening here's what's more interesting i go to the exact area of the river with usgs data and what we see these spikes here are when the water starts to peak and gets higher and it's just basically billowing up as you've seen in that river area so again when you look on this map right here rocky mountains right there you go all the way over and you see where the river is and it's not in the zone where it should be doing this bubbling at based on usgs data so something is bubbling under the ground and what brought us into a different scenario here is we looked at this park rangers website where she's in san diego and she leads us down the line of this story to figure out what is going on underground so this probably just looks like a puddle to you but it's a spring and a few months ago there was not water here the spring did not flow but we did have an earthquake. So about four miles from where I'm standing right now was the epicenter of the earthquake. I heard this earthquake before I felt it and it was loud and it really, it, it shook the earth. Um, it was the biggest earthquake I've ever experienced. And after the earthquake, the spring began to flow again. So you can see, I think this is the source right up here somewhere. And you can see how much water there is. Um, so seven years ago or so is when this spring last went dry and it was during a major earthquake. So are you seeing water start to come up in areas that you haven't seen before? Let us know here in the comment section. Drop what you think. Here's what happened. She told us where the location is in her video. Santa Isabel, East San Diego County. This now tells us a huge story because this location, as a matter of fact, is on a fault area. And this is exactly what it says on CA.gov. Due to poor definition of the fault in this area, it is recommended that any underground alignments are made as far away from the fault as possible. So this is exactly where this stuff was coming up and I read into something else that's interesting. Yes, faults can act as pathways for water, sometimes allowing it to surface or move through the ground. Faults and fractures in the Earth's crust where rocks move past each other, and these breaks can create channels for water to travel through. So water is traveling through all these areas in the ground, and the, there, it's coming up now in these Yellowstone vents and these Mount Rainier vents. All these things look like potential zones where it's causing this to happen now another thing i want to show you here on screen subscribe right now for all the deep intel and information where we're getting these from eyewitness accounts the guy who has the property over in idaho or excuse me bear creek kansas we spoke to him specifically and he said this i'm gonna show you what's happening behind the scenes i said what's the update on the opening on bear creek fault line this month on your videos i've been reporting on it my youtube can you drop a new video he says yes after the last few months some more have opened up we saw and uh if you want more detailed analysis of this fault area and how far does it stretch i had to get this map made through usgs with my own data so bear creek fault kansas it goes all the way as you can see over and so that's how deep that fault is he's having different areas open up now we got more information here and if you've got information yourself, please give it to us in the chat because this is a growing community. We're going to be the first warning system. Here's something else that I got from people here on the channel. In my last video, somebody says, our lakes are vibrating here in Sierra Nevada. Weird waves overall. And this was my last video. Fault lines just shifted under California and spread into Canada. That's the next video we'll talk about. But then I found the video where somebody is showing in Savannah, Georgia, specifically exactly what my audience and people said here check this out i've never seen this water just kind of uh vibrating like this Little mini waves hitting up against the rock. 
wind's barely blowing. Like, I'm not too sure. This is... All right, fam, I'm back here the next day because, again, I come here every day on my lunch break. This is what the water looks like on a daily basis. And then I got one huge thing next to Mount Rainier that is going to help people huge here. And But before this warning, guys, what we're looking for over the next days and weeks, we need your help. Strange water bubbling, strange cracks in the property areas, uh, just events where you see something abnormal next to if you're in these locations by these faults. And if you don't know if you're by these faults, we can do all the research. But I need you to drop a comment what you're seeing and then put your state next to that comment. All right. So if you're next to Mount Rainier, somebody who studied the geolocations and how it's going to flow out, if something potentially happens, this is just awareness, nothing to do with fear. Check this out right here. This is going to give us a field of what we need to do, how to navigate it. If the flows of lava come out in any location that you're next to. For I know a lot of people have been hitting me up saying, oh, there's earthquakes at the mountain and all that jazz. See down there, that's the Lahar. It's a lot closer than I look, but like I'm on the hill that you run up to if you're in trouble. You see Mount Rainier blows, it's going to go down here and then take out the Orning Valley and continue down to Sumner and then it's going to keep going out to Tacoma, which is that way. But that, you see that, that's the Lahar, the mud flow that's supposed to happen. It's going to go all the way from Mount Rainier yep. down through that valley. All right, y'all. So we got a, a couple areas that are offline with the USGS, and that's areas in Idaho where the cracks is open on a homeowner's property named Kim. Kim, please get back with us. We're kind of concerned about you because we haven't heard from you since last week. And uh, we're, we're trying to get more information for everybody here. So please, if you, uh, you hear anything from Kim in the chat, let me know. Look for it through the comment section because we think her property looked like it was cracking. We don't know if it's going to drop. She said she would get back with me. We have not seen that. And as a community together, I want us to be on the lookout for the next coming days. And here's the big thing right here that ties big into this story here. So Watch next right now in the chat. Fault lines just shifted under California crack spreading to Canada. I laid out all the details, every single thing for you to look at and then to know how to navigate this through your county and your state areas. This is going to be something newly coming up. I have the video on the left hand side. We'll have much more coming and subscribe to stay tuned with all the research.